on camera. <laughs> Cherry Center, where I have a studio. This is my third year participating in the Dreaming Art exhibit. It smells so good. I'm just stand in it here. So, want me to take some pictures of you and me then? All right. Well, my studio is right over here, and we're. This is a shack in the back. That's what I call it at the Carl Cherry Center in Carmel. So come on in. My name is Diana Mara Henry. And today is April 16th or thereabouts, 1993. Everybody uses it. This is great. Instead of just being <laughs> something art like. <laughs> what do I know about art? I mean, come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, this is it. I've got um, got my prints here. And none of these filing cabinets. Negatives in these. And uh, some slides, some of the bigger works in here. And then, you know, different exhibits boxed up in different forms. I have boxes of things I haven't filed away yet. You know, exhibits I've been in, clippings. Um, Different kinds of this. Uh, these are some pit photographs that are going out to different exhibits um, in the next in the next couple of weeks, and and so on. Uh, one of these is going to be for a landscape exhibit up in Santa Cruz, which I am participating in through the Women's Caucus for Art, which is a nice group, and uh, so clipping that for the Dreaming Art exhibit, Cherry Center opens. Um, so obviously it wasn't the nude <laughs> that they used in the pine cone, but usually I trade with the Cherry Center a publicity photo in exchange for a thing in the exhibit. Oh, that's Sam Colburn, watercolor, wonderful artist in this area. That's in his shack in Asilomar. And I saw that photograph several times already. This is the um, was a series I did at Renaissance Fair in Southern California around 1970. I think it was in 1970. Snake Charmer at the Renaissance Fair. Mm -hmm. I have some mm -hmm. other large. Yeah, Miss Lillian, election night. I spent election night in 1976 in Plains, Georgia, about as far away from her as we are now. <laughs> um, just watching the election on her face. We have Malcolm Forbes. I did a lot of work for Malcolm Forbes and his family. Photograph. Or Malcolm Forbes, yeah. This was his castle in Normandy. He flew me over uh, two years in a row on the Concorde to photograph his balloon meets. <laughs> it was one of my more fun assignments. is walking through uh, Arlington National Cemetery. And, uh, it was a very exciting event. Women encircled, totally encircled the Pentagon, which is a, at least a mile in diameter in the circumference. And I photographed the different activities and demonstrators. I just, I just sort of disemboweled this, this uh, group of photographs and took out the Bread and Puppet Theater photographs to send to them, tell them that I have some photographs of Bread and Puppet Theater performances. This was trying to prevent people from going in and out of the Pentagon until they thought about what they were doing. <sighs> And 
and here are the, the four first ladies and Bella. I had done a lot of campaign work for Bella. She hired me for the first National Women's Conference official photographer. This other one is of Lily Tomlin with Gloria Stein, of course, and Bella. I did a lot of work for Bella in New York. Wonderful woman. Is the light any good here? Or is it these are the three last, uh, these are the three torchbearers for the last. 2,000 miles from Seneca Falls, where the first women's convention was um, in the 1850s, I think, to um, Houston, 1977, for the first National Women's Conference. These three women carried the torch for the last mile. Uh, Sylvia Ortiz, Peggy Cockernut, and Michelle Searcy. And guess which one was on the cover of Time magazine? Just one of them. One in the middle. First National Women's Conference? Yeah, this is the First National Women's Conference, 1977 in Houston. Little girl's probably a city councilwoman now, let's say. <laughs> so, so I don't know how much more you want to film, but I thought maybe what I could do is I could just sort of stuff the shelves. Oh, this is what happens. Oh, there's a book coming out, or someone wants some photographs for an exhibit, so I, I pull tons of things out of shelves and then put them back. Ballet Trocadero de Monte Carlo. You know, I mean, each one of these goes in a different, a different drawer. So I have to, you know, putting putting them back is a lot harder than taking them out. Believe me, I need an assistant. Uh, is anyone there who'd like to help me? <laughs> And then I got to have another list that I want to go through that book on men's issues that I want to try to find some photographs for. This is uh, an heiress at 21 Club in New York. <laughs> uh, and here's a self-portrait. <laughs> Under a hair dryer. Mm. Oh, here's a fun one. Actually, these might be fun for your class. This is a fashion event or some kind of event at Rizzoli Bookstore in New York. And um, there's another one here of uh, Fran Leibowitz. Asked me to photograph her. We went down to the village in New York and went into her favorite bookstore. She picked up that book to have a picture to her. When was that picture of your mom taken? It was probably taken around 1980. And uh, another heiress at the 21 Club. And this is what I did in New York a lot. I did a lot of uh, party photography, as well as the political photographs. And a lot of photographs for hospitals. That was my, my other bread and butter, party and hospitals. community organization so that I would, in exchange, documented their, their uh, programs in exchange for getting work published in their flyer. And then I called McGovern up, the McGovern campaign, and uh, McGovern campaign in New Hampshire, and I said to them, would you like, how would you like a, um, I, I'm a freelance photographer, and I like to get on the press bus. And uh, I said, sure, come on up. So that's how I started photographing the government. I got a lot of um, photographs published from the McGovern campaign. And then 
this is um, this was a, a talking about collaboration. Some of the things that I photograph, of course, have been people asking me to photograph them. Like this was Deanne Stillman and Ann Beats. Ann Beats became more famous as a as a comedian, um, comic screenwriter in Hollywood. And they were doing a promotional lecture for their book called Titters, a book of female humor, which was uh, trying to reclaim uh, humor, especially uh, bad jokes and vulgar humor as the domain of, for women. Yeah? Did you hear him play? He was very good. Uh -huh. right. This was his opening. It was an opening at the Jewish Museum for one of his shows. That's in, uh, one of his pieces in the background. It's like a, he did, had a big mural of Jewish history, and, and he was playing his instrument. <sighs> but of course, I have to wash the walls first. Did you see how dirty all this is? Anyone want to come help wash the walls? <laughs> I think those women. Well, here she is. This was at the Democratic Convention in 1972. She was running for president. Uh, so I think she looked great. I don't know about who didn't like what her hair looked like. I think she looked great. Um, she was there with her husband. Who was made for the primary. And um, she was she won. Uh, but then her campaign manager thought we ought to have her with her glasses. Because she, the first poster hadn't included her glasses. And when people met her, they said, oh, you don't look like your picture. So, truth in advertising, we did another one with her glasses on. So that was, that was three years after I got out of college. That was pretty good, I think. Especially considering that <laughs> the first year I worked for NBC and Staten Island Advance. Yeah. Yeah. This, was, this, was, this one was the first time I photographed her. I went down to the battery. I was just interested in her, and I went down and I, I sat down on the ground in front of her, aiming up, and I was so excited I dropped my lens. I knew it was going to be a great shot. Actually, in the the actual photograph, there's a Chinese inscription sign. Some Chinese supporters of her respond. And then these are other campaigns. This was for her mayoral campaign. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, also from the first National Women's Party. This was on the cover of the Village Voice, so that's probably where you remember it from. I came back from Houston with all these great shots, and I brought them to the Village Voice. And, and Fred McDerris, he didn't want to pay me like $75 a photo or something like that. I mean, I'd gone all the way to Houston. And he was trying to, and he said, well, let's see, we'll pay you less, you know, but we'll give you plenty of work, you know. And I said, uh-uh. I said, I know you're not going to give me the work, and I want the money for this assignment. So, you know, they gave me the money, I don't know, maybe $100 a photo or something. And I, you know, but they wouldn't have given me the work anyway. So. <laughs> this is the uh, uh Scott King at the First National Women's Conference. And this has been used in textbooks on Coretta's slide. I'm so happy. I still see her on uh, TV. She's still really active. This was fun. The NASA booth. Picture yourself as an astronaut. Here's Barbara Jordan signing a... Uh, Signing autographs at the First National Women's Conference. And Liz Holtzman, First National Women's Conference. Keep them in the closet. The state of the women's movement? I think it's great. Is that one of your questions? Cat show in New York, performing a mothering trick with a doll. And this is a, a sperm sample. Take a sperm sample. 
and a stud, a stud farm in France.